okay, thank you. I'm Sung-Hwa Kang, and I'm developing biocellian, but like in this presentation, instead of going to bio biocellian details, our focus more on presenting the key design rationale behind, behind biocellian, but are gonna have a demo session, so if you have questions about specifics, that's the time to ask those. So, Biocellian is another software platform, but like focusing more on providing very high modeling capacity. So I'm gonna elaborate this throughout the uh, presentation. So basically, this is about biological system modeling, and especially what I'm interested in is in developing at least one practical model. That's something people outside the research community were gonna be excited about. And like, if we can develop that kind of practical models, that can really transform many very different uh, important problems in coming centuries like healthcare, energy, environment, agriculture. What can be more important than that? But like, that is very important, but also very difficult. And many biologists say those are impossible. So, and like Macha today said, said like, learning from other success is a good thing. So our second that, and uh-oh, why that's here? And there are other community who have been working on solving extremely difficult and seemingly impossible problem for longer time and had more successes, like artificial in intelligence or machine learning. So let's see what happened in those fields. So there have been many ups and downs. So they started roughly something like 60 years ago, and they worked on a small scale model with many simplifying assumptions, and that, those models worked under that constraint, and people made a lot of bluffing that that can solve many very important problems. But like those models failed to work on more complex, larger scale problems to be practical relevant. And funding agencies figured out that they are just bluffing. So that leads to the first AI winter. Then Japanese government has too much money, so they can basically throw money on projects that may not work. So that leads to short spring, but like those solutions also failed to work again. Another winter. Then they come out with a, a machine learning mode of something called multi-layered neural networks, and they find the technique to train that model, something called back pro propagation, and they finally succeeded to generate a first model to be practically relevant. And that approach combined with big data and big computing, then that really started to rock, and these days, like, many companies see great potential on those machine learning approaches and they started to bomb the field with money. So money is basically flooding in that field and basically money attracts talents. So like many super smart people are working super hard dreaming about multi-million dollar jackpot. So like the salary for the top machine learning researchers is reaching that of NFL superstars. And like there are many startups and Big companies like Google, Facebook are buying those for many, many million dollars. So with this amount of money and talents, let's see how fast things can go. So in 20, 2012, like first, a machine learning architecture started to match the performance of, of human in, in recognizing handwritten digits. So that's something significant, but not super impressive. But like just two years later, like machine ar learning architecture started to recognize images. But so by just seeing this image, like computer can tell that this is a close-up of a child holding a stuffed animal. And 2014, like Facebook's face recognition engine started to recognize human front or face comparable to the level of human. And just one one year later. They are now saying just like recognizing front or face is not fun enough. So like they can recognize human for using other cues. Like here you are seeing only the Barack Obama's back, but like you can know, you can figure out this Barack Obama 
and computer can also do that. And like in case of speech recognition, like I used Galaxy S2 several years ago, and I tried speech recognition several times and find that, oh, it sucks, it's not usable. And just something like three to four years later, I bought Galaxy Note 4 and tried speech recognition. It's working very well in, even in noise environment. So just a few years ago, many people in speech recognition field said, like, uh, the field is really saturated and it's not going to work because of the ambient noise. But that's proven to be false. And it's not just working very well in noise environments, but it's also understanding the context. So like, if I give three questions in a row, saying what's the weather in Seattle, what about tomorrow, and what about Knoxville, then it understands what I'm asking is what is the weather tomorrow in Knoxville and give the proper answer. And like, so machine learning is working very well in passive jobs, but like I thought that the idea is going to work only for passive jobs, but it cannot perform creative tasks. But like, they are saying no, and with some exa exaggeration, they started to break into the territory of artists. So they are generating pictures or taking a given picture as motive, creating another picture somewhat related but quite different. So now this is working so well for many different problems and people are starting to worry about this working too well. So the super intelligence about the possible danger of it and in these days, I feel like machine learning guys are somewhat underselling what they are doing, especially something related to its potential to remove jobs. So why this is working? Basically, there are several aspects. One is big data and like big computing capacity, but also there is a machine learning architecture with very large learning capacity that can benefit from big data and big computing. So this multi-layered neural networks, like basically using the pretty much the same structure inspired by human brain. So there are these nodes represent neurons and connection patterns between neurons can vary to some degree. And then what function to use to model neuron behavior can vary. So that's something we don't have a definite answer, right? But, and like you can do somewhat different pre-processing and post-processing, but basically using the same structure, you can use many different problems, something like computer vision, speech recognition, image generation, all those problems, you can solve all those problems using a single architecture. And that architecture scales. So like if you have only small amount of data and small amount of computing, this uh, multi-layered neural networks or something often called as a deep learning architecture these days does not work as well as simple other machine learning approaches. But like if you have real big data and big computing, this scales and this rocks. So that's in a, so and another important aspect of this working for many different problems is like if you tune your code for a computer vision problem, then speech recognition task can also benefit from that tuning. And then if you improve something else for another problem, another problem can also benefit. So like that can just by investing a huge amount of money. So now deep pocketed companies are seeing that and investing billions of dollars. So where are we? So I think there are several decades of research also in biological system modeling, but I think we are still pretty early. And the reason that the first machine learning approach failed is they worked on a problem that uh, uh, they used an approach that is not scalable. That works in well in small scale with many simplifying applications, but there's no straightforward path to incrementally tune that model to work for more complex, larger scale problems, right? And like, and that, I'm sorry to say this, but that does not sound really that unfamiliar. Like many existing solution in this field works pretty well in small scale with many simplifying up assumptions, but it is often very not trivial how to scale that to 
much more complex, much larger problems. And if we cannot fix this, what is ahead of us can be a long winter. But how can you avoid that and directly go from here to produce a first model that really shows the practical value? So like that can impress companies. This is something deserve their investment, right? If they start to uh, invest billions of dollars, then this will, will do going to move very fast as what happened in the AI field because the potential impact will not going to be small, significantly smaller than AI, right? So basically what are necessary? We need to get there. We need big data and we already have pretty large omics data, though data we have are not very well balanced. So like there are tons of DNA sequencing data, but like if I want to build some models and want to get diffusion coefficient, especially diffusion coefficient varies based on tissue structure, like in getting that kind of data is very painful. I tried many, many times and have failed almost always. And we need big computing and we have some advantages over the AI community. So AI community started in 1956, and I Googled with 1956 computer, and this is what I got. So IBM 305 Ramak, and like, it has 4.4 megabyte disk space, which is remarkable for 1956, but like its leasing fee was 3.2K per month, and considering inflation, as 200k per month. So like in this age, like computing is power is very limited and using a sort of restricted solution makes sense. But now we are living in 2015. We can have way more computing power. So I think at this point, like there's less excuse for starting with a very limited solution. We may start with a simple model, but we need to adopt a platform that can be extended to build more complex, larger scale models. So we really need modeling, cap modeling platform that can benefit from big data and big computing. Okay, so Biocellian design is inspired by biological systems in a similar way that deep learning architecture is inspired by human brain. So basically, to model an individual cell behavior, that is, not, that is function of mechanical in interactions between neighboring cells and individual cell behaviors and their microenvironments. So Biocellian is designed to support this kind of computational structure, but does not fix what to do to model pairwise interaction or update microenvironment. So ask users prov to provide that code to get, to get flexibility. And this is combined with sophisticated solvers and Macha has uh, told me that, told us that like, we need to have endless decent PD solvers. I'll go one step further. There are decades of research in the HPC community about efficiently solving partial differential equations. And if you really want to go to scale, we need to embrace that, and biocellin does. So biocellin is efficient in small scales and scales to large computers. So here's some example about biocellin's flexibility. We'll build multiple different models, but what I want to emphasize is if you tune biocellin's performance for one model, other models can also benefit. And if you add additional features to support this model, then this model or this model can also benefit from that. So like there are, we can eat more justify investment. So, and if I talk about scalability, this is small scale model video. So if I speed up this a bit, this is what, yeah, go faster. <laughs> yep, so like, this is video, and if I jump to here, hey, hey, and this is a work with 
Gary on and Chase Cockrell at the University of Chicago. Yeah, but th so this, we can model this in small scale first, then go to a larger scale like this. This involves 138 million agents. Uh-oh, yeah, Ben, like if I zoom in, zoom out, you can see the scale. And we are currently working on further improving this biocell lens modeling capacity in multiple aspects, especially our focus is providing a mechanism to model a single cell in much more detail, considering spatial variation and cell shape kind of thing, and also further improving biocell lens for performance. So like that 138 million cell simulation was run on 16 node cluster using just 256 cores. So like current state of the art supercomputer has a million cores and the HPC community is working on building a computer with billion cores. So like we can go still go million times bigger or run million times more complex models for each cells if you can write proper software to use that kind of HPC system. And Biocellian is all about reducing the software development cost to access that kind of supercomputer. And here's the acknowledgement. So like, admittedly, Biocellian is not a modeling framework for dummies. So you cannot build a model by just making a few clicks. But if you're really serious about building the first practically relevant model, you can start with something simple, but like you want to go to more complex models and get larger and larger. And Biocellian can provide support for that. And are going to have a demo session? So if you have more specific questions, come to our demo and like are going to answer more questions or give more examples. Thank you very much. And I'm ready for questions. <laughs> <laughs>